people that sell their sex for money, should they expect to be marriageable? People that sell their sex for money, should they expect to be marriageable? <clears throat> Octavius, we'll start with you since uh, you didn't want to offend anyone. Start doing this. <laughs> You're muted. We can't hear you. Yeah. Well, that 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 figures. <laughs> well, you didn't offend anyone. I know, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Now that you guys can hear me, I know, right? <laughs> I think having a high expectation for marriage is good, but like I, I would say that a woman or a dude would probably have to be very secretive or get with someone who doesn't have like a, a high standard for their own life. Because uh, thinking about it, most I would say most guys and uh, females they start having sex like what I would, I'm gonna I'm grace them with 16 age 16 and women start wanting to settle down like around 30 to 35 so that's around like 20 years to where they're pretty much like career whores and so with that being said that now that doesn't take away from their side job as a career woman but they they do this this uh this life that's filled with uh promiscuity and then they want to try to go and feel entitled to something that a woman who is more modest well preserved and they want they want to try to get the same thing that they get which i think is uh in an error on their on their part and on society's part only because um only because, like, I mean, they're, I guess they've been hyped up to think that they deserve this. That we, I mean, even the guys think that we deserve certain things that was never traditionally so. And I compare it to, like, someone who's been, like, a, a career criminal robbing everybody. They went to school, robbed their teachers. And now after 20 to 30 years of being a career criminal, just getting out of jail, they're like, I deserve to be a lawyer. I deserve to have my, to have a Fortune 500 business. I deserve to be this big CEO of this of, of this corporation where I can make something on myself. Well, you can have the expectation, but it doesn't mean it is actually going to happen because of that long road that you put in. You, you have a career of this. Now you have to live beyond that career, starting at ground zero. And okay, if you have to put the time in. So should they expect? Not at all. Well, I, actually, let me let me retract that. I, I, I'll push anyone to uh, desire it, but to expect it to to it, it would take a lot of work, and I would say it would take so much work only because you put so much in. It's like somebody who, like, let's say, uh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to get to the round of the panel first before. Before we start throwing the ideas, I like where you're going, but let's get to everyone first. All, All right. right, cool, cool. Anna, I think this is a very interesting question because the thing is, is should, it's it's really around the wording. So I'm all about wording. I'm all about well, whatever it is, but it's like, should they expect? And I believe that deep down that I think everybody is at some point deserving to receive love and to be even into marriage if they do aspire for marriage. I think there the question comes down to if they do want to get into marriage, then I believe that, yes, maybe there is somebody out there that will accept their past. And it's really about just an analyzing mostly the now situation, not so much as the past situation. So we talk about somebody who sells sex for money, but yet right now in our society, we have people who actually have sex with multiples of partners on and on and on and on and on and live like that. And yet we we would we wouldn't have the same expectations from them from them, or it's not so much as viewed as the same thing as if they actually exchange sex for money. So I think there's a very bigger conversation around that. And I believe it really comes down to how that person who has done um, So I guess sorry to sorry to yeah, cut you off. I just want to throw this in there. I guess I should have probably phrased it in there as well. Cause the whole idea is something like OnlyFans. 
if you've done something like OnlyFans or something like pornography, mm -hmm. should you expect to be marriageable after that? Well, I believe if you want to be, if you want to get married someday, I, I believe you, you could. Okay. Okay. Simple. Yeah. John? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Going no. against the grain. I love it. <laughs> Man, you know that, bro. Dudes be freaking out if a girl tell them they slept with 16 dudes. This girl made, she slept with 16 dudes in one day. Okay, like, you might as well, if you go marry, you might as well get, don't even, you know what? Don't even worry about the number. It, it doesn't matter. She's had the reconstructive surgery that she needed and you good. You good. Just don't don't subscribe to any porn sites, any OnlyFans. Don't take her out in big major cities. Y'all need to move to the country where people don't even have internet. You'll be all right. Go ahead with it. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Dudes be too tripping over the past way too much. Why I bet you're thinking about him now, ain't you? But <laughs> how do I do it? What about me? You think I could have made it in the point? Man, come on. They'll they be in one big old toxic mess. But whatever so so no no right no 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 <laughs> you told you you chose money over marriage that's what you did all right all right empress uh, i i um i feel like people have to have the space to evolve um and i i feel like people who sell sex for money have many reasons why they do it some people will sell sex for money to put themselves through school and to reinvent um, their lives. And I believe that um, there's somebody for everybody. Um, maybe the average man can't handle someone who has a, a CD pass, but people evolve, you know? I, I, you know, I know people who had, you know, um, a, a hairy pass that have reinvented themselves and now they're respectable. They found someone in their lives that loved them and and and, and they are married and, and they're successfully married. So I, I don't believe that um, because you sell sex for money that you should not expect to be married. I believe that you should expect to find, if you wanna be married, expect to find your soulmate and not just somebody to marry. Because when you find your soulmate, then you're, that person's gonna accept all of you and your past and they'll be okay with it your soulmate how how likely do you think it is that most people will find their soulmate that's a once in a lifetime if ever in a i lifetime. love the caveats i love throwing the caveats so. <laughs> <laughs> people yeah. never find their soulmate some people walk right by their soulmate and they they don't understand that they've just you know, you hear the, the old adage, the one that got away. Um, so a lot of times people have have come in contact uh, for, a, for a, a brief uh, moment with their soulmate and they didn't value the, you know, that that time, that opportunity. And then sometimes you just know and you're with your soulmate. And when you find your soulmate, the past doesn't matter from what you have at that moment and what you build going forward is what's important. So I believe that even if you sell sex for money um, in, this, in this moment, that you can still find a marriage that is healthy, thriving, and some money that will love you and accept you. Xavier? <laughs> um, I mean, I agree with, uh, with what most people on the panel have been saying is that the fact that you, if you want to expect to be married, sure, you can expect to be married. But, um, you know, uh, Octavius brought up the, the example of a criminal. I feel like if, if you're a sex worker, um, may, yeah, may, maybe, you can, maybe you can get with someone who's an ex-criminal who has a CD pass just like you. And maybe you can come together and, and, and create a, a happy marriage. But um, you know, I, I read an article, which I shared with you, uh, I think last week where, um, it was, I think a woman who was a stripper who had, um, trouble dating men. Um, whereas, as they'll be fine with her, um, career choice in the beginning. Cause there's something like, there's something like a fantasy where it's, it's a sexy, you know, it's a, it's a sexy fantasy where, you know, I think every guy or most men would, would probably date a stripper on a short term basis but probably not on a long term unless of course 
you know, you have a CD pass as a man as well, and, and you really don't care. But in that article, um, the woman uh, kept on using the words like insecure and immature because as, as the relationship went on and became more serious, um, you know, the men tend to bring up uh, her, her, her line of work. And at the end of the day, I think that, uh, you know, I think jealousy is a, is a normal feeling. You know, what you do with that feeling is, is up to you. Obviously, you should keep it under control. But it's much harder to keep that under control if you know your woman's giving men lap dances every night or... or She's giving them more than that. Or, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because it's like, at the end of the day, if you if you have a price on your lap dances, you have a price on your sex. So Yeah, it's called um, a champagne room. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we all heard the Chris Rock song. There's no sex in the champagne room. Well, <laughs> there's only sex in the champagne room. What about men dancers? What about male dancers? I think. Oh, please. That is such a small, such a small minority. It's a small minority, but I don't think male dancers can expect to have. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, you can expect to want to marry someone and expect to marry someone. But for that person to be of high quality, if, if you're a, 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 a stripper or a sex worker, you're, I mean, you're not going to get a high quality man. And if you're a, if you're a male stripper you're not gonna get a high quality woman you know what i mean you can if you're a male stripper maybe you get a female stripper or a man I, or, or a man, or a man. Or a man. <laughs> but uh um, 2020 yeah I, I like i guess you can you know i i because i think um uh anna and empress both you know um said that sure anyone should be able to expect marriage i'm seeing, I'm seeing a reoccurring but, theme here but uh I, i'd like chris i'm sorry to cut you off I yeah just, no sorry. doubt no doubt uh, I'd like Krypton to give her an answer. Oh, um, well, I, I mean, it's going to kind of agree with everyone. I just think that, you know, whether it's an OnlyFans, a stripper, a sex worker, you have to be aware that there are going to be some people that, you know, are not going to want to date you or not going to want to be. You, you do shorten your options. Like, I'm going to use that as, ex as an example. I'm bisexual. There are some men who do not want to date me because I'm bisexual. Mm -hmm. I should shorten my options because that's just, it, you know, unfortunately, that's just the way people are. And it's not a bad thing. Like, they just can't handle it. And then you don't want them in your life because, like, you've grown as a person. If they can't understand that, then that's fine. That's whatever. But at the end of the day, your op options do get smaller from that. I think you got a fan. <laughs> I thought being bisexual broadens your options as opposed to oh uh, well with women yeah but with men no either well, men like to fetishize the fact and be like oh yeah threesome though that I'm monogamous not you know bisexual does not mean I have sex with two people at the same time bisexual mm -hmm. means I find both people attractive but like both sex is attractive but no there are some men who are like well how do I know you won't cheat with a woman well if I'm choosing you then I, like either I'm choosing you or I'm not choosing you like so I, I will say this because that's what I noticed the reoccurring theme was here the men were pretty much like nah fam I can't have that <laughs> right yeah exactly. and mo the women were a little bit more like, oh, you know, it's it's understandable. You could possibly find someone that could love you. Right. I will say this: men in general, when it comes to dating, we are very territorial creatures. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Like Definitely. we want like the girl on Instagram that everyone is liking because she's got a bad body. Like yeah. we would like her for one night. One night. That's it. We would we would like the pick, but we would not. We wouldn't wife the chick. That's the best way to say it. Yeah, right. All right. You like that? Like you like pick, that? All right. Can I say that? <laughs> like the pick, but won't wipe the chick. But, there, but there's exactly. innocent women. There's women out here that are wholesome. They're they're nice looking women. They're professional, and they're still not married. They're not getting married. The men are still not marrying them. So that's because they fell into that. That's because they fell into that. Uh, I don't believe in gender roles. Uh, I'm confused about who I should be dating. Uh, I want to be a feminist. That's no. what got them. I, 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 I challenge that. I, I, I believe that there's a direct um, connection with men unwilling to commit. And well, they don't find any reason why they won't I, marry you. I don't think that, that, that that's necessarily uh -huh. true. Um, only because, I mean, it, it's it's a lot of things that, that push a man from even desiring commitment, when, especially whenever uh, women are so open, not in general, but there's so many women who are open with their legs. So they're like, okay, this is a thought. I don't know if I can trust her or 
she doesn't like chivalry anyway, or she belittles me because her mother taught her this. And there's a lot of different conflicts that have to be thought of. It's not just simply men don't want to commit. It, women also don't want to commit. And if I can, I, I, ha I did have a response to almost everybody because I, I like to respond to the things that people say, mm -hmm. if possible. Yeah, I mean, if keep it short, concise, and sweet. <laughs> I will. All right, so with Anna, she was saying it's not so much on the past, it's where you are now, but there's a saying that goes, if you don't, excuse me, if you don't know to, the history, you're going to be failing to, you're going to repeat history. So if this person has a shaky history with all these crazy things, sex issues, porn, whatever it is, issues that they're dealing with prior to you, you I mean, it's good to know so you can know if you if you need to be committing to this situation, that's the issue. We have issues with vet, with vetting, making sure to check out that um, background check. And um, I, I completely agree with John, but I would feel uncomfortable walking around with somebody uh, on the street and they'd be like, oh, that's her right there. You remember the one with the cup? <laughs> <laughs> every every guy's nightmare right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I will, I will say Have you this. actually ever seen that happen though? Right. Like I've I've been in I'm the gonna go on the record. I'm gonna say yes. Okay. Because yeah. John, it looks like you're saying yes as well. Yes. Xavier, it looks like yeah. you're saying I mean, sometimes you see you see like somebody the video. You see somebody gonna... dating a girl that like that you might have been with or that your friend might have been with or that everybody been with, and then you see some guy, you know, walking in the mall with her or whatever. And it, you know, at the end of the day, if they're happy, that's on them. But and, and you know I'm not a disrespectful person where I'm gonna like make a big deal like, about it. But know, yeah. but you know like some like you know I think everybody it's like you said everybody's every man's nightmare is to be walking somewhere public and you see guys whispering in each other's ear pointing at your girlfriend you know or your wife or whatever the case may be. It happened with me I, one time when I when I was in the army I was dating a stripper. Who would have thought? You and you didn't, and you, you didn't know. A stripper. Well, it was fun. I mean, what can I say? <laughs> Wait, did but you know I she was a stripper or you or, or you were unaware? Well, she told me she told me at the time about her stripper past, and okay. I was like, "It's whatever, I don't care." Yeah. I mean, I only had one intention at the time, and just to be honest, it was about. I mean, I I wanted something that was easy access, pretty much. So, um, like, I, I walked around, and people knew her. She was quite um, successful. Even though. my even my guys that was in my unit was like. Hey man, hey Torrance. Hey man, this this girl, I saw her at the strip club. Like, at the, I'm like, oh, you did, huh? So like, it, 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 I know, I I know how it feels. But I, I will say, I will say this. I will say this that um, women want a man with a future, and men want a woman without a past. That's or like, a, that's a, 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 a modest it's, past. Like, a man. modest past, yeah. So yeah, in, in this generation, we say more <laughs> a, mo a modest past. Yeah, a modest past. That's not realistic. I, I don't think you can know anybody's past, the, the, the full story. Um, and I'm just going to let you guys know that for women, you know what they will allow you to know. You will never know a woman's full past. And so if you are a man that's going to dig in somebody's past and that's going to be the prerequisite, I whether think that's you unhealthy, admit, honestly. I think yeah. that you are you are destined for a disaster from that point. Uh, you know, because everybody has a past and maybe what you know their past wasn't anything to them and it may be like a monumental thing to you. So I'm just gonna put on record that men you're never going to know a woman's complete uh, history. You're going to know what she's going to allow you to know. And you're going to have to love the person that's in front of you and be okay with that because that's what it is. And a woman is never going to know all of the women that you've had encounters with. And, and if, I don't, I don't well, we have to go true. there. We have to go to that tangent. I would love to go to that tangent. We've been right. talking a lot about women exchanging money for sex, but we haven't talked about the other way around. Right. Men, well, you're doing your true. standards of women. Like, women needs to be proper, needs to be whatever it is. But how about men? Exactly. I agree. I agree. What do you mean? Are, are you but, talking yeah, about okay. men selling sex or men buying sex? Both. Both. Well, because okay, so, so here, 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 think about it. Hold on, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Hold on, hold on, ladies. Men buying sex is all men. No, it's yeah, not. No, it's not. not. Every, Every man no, pays for it one way or another. Oh, yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Unless we going Dutch. Who do you think pays for the date? Yep. Who do you think bought the outfit? Yep. Who do you think picked the location? Yep. Who do you think picked two up? I'm what? talking about a normal date costs more than a hooker. A normal date costs more than a hooker. You can get a hooker for an hour for hundred dollars. You can't go out for no hundred dollars unless you're a cheap date. That's no, that's, that's, so you might want to stick to sell effect. I completely agree you with that. I mean, buying sex. If you don't okay. believe it, if you're married, go home and tell your wife you no longer have a job and you will not work again and she's gonna have to put all the bills. Let me know how long it is before she divorce you. And that's why that's why with most relationships, the woman they focus on a man's ability to provide and yeah. and to be able to gift to them if possible. And that's so, what I, mean. like, no like what saying, I definitely agree. But anything that's below now, and this doesn't this doesn't um include engagements, but anything that's below marriage is um uh, you're 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 pretty much selling your body and he's buying your body as a boyfriend. It's it's strictly what it what those two words is, a boy and a friend, or a man and a friend. And what happens is, is they people will say all day, "Oh no, I don't believe in friends with benefits." But you got this friends that's in your house that you're having sex with. He's you don't have any ring, you don't have anything that says that this relationship is established other than you having sex. So, I, like, I, I, will, I will say this. I will say this. Sorry, sorry, Empress. I will say this. Um. A man, a man that has had a colorful past, women might still pick him solely because he, if he can provide, if he can provide, that's what women t technically like most of the time look for and as a majority. Him, but women are going to men, pick. men look for pretty much like um, the very and little promiscuity. Exclusivity, correct. And, yeah. So that's why for, for more men more it matters so much. Right. More but of a flipping the opposite way around, it might matter, but not to the same effect as it will matter for women. Because right. women look for men. To, I mean, listen, this is a panel. I want to hear you guys' opinions. Mm -hmm. But women look for men to be the providers. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. So if he had a if he had a colorful history. That does not mean he cannot provide. That just means he had a colorful history. That's what that means. When we, when men step into a relationship or into a marriage, we expect to be the providers at all times. We don't expect the day that we, we shouldn't be the providers. It's so, only now in, now in history that women can provide for themselves as well as for a family. But even then, most women still want a man that could provide. Yep. So what yeah, are what are women women what do men want from women then just not to have a pass? So you're just buying our body and body count? Like what's what's the argument for why do you go after a woman then? Well, right. I mean, in a sense, I mean that's that's like a prerequisite prerequisite. You a woman and a man both are giving their resume to each other and they're looking like, okay, so you got this many people. Let me see, within this amount of area. Okay, that's where your range is. I might be okay with this. Okay, you don't like this, you don't like that. Well, I like these different men things. Men don't want to admit that as much as like men are the providers, we are the emotional like providers. We are there for you emotionally almost all of the time. And we, a woman will sit there and be like, hey, you shouldn't be treated like that by this, that, and the other thing. Like we give you well, the backbone a lot of the time. You see a strong man, there's usually a strong woman right behind him. Exactly. And I, I agree, but like- um, So we're still providing yeah, just in yeah, a different yeah. way. Well, like yes. You guys a keep saying- A woman definitely uh, is supposed to, I wouldn't say be a backbone, because that means that she's holding up everything. I mean, the, the man is the strong one. He should be holding up everything. The woman should be helping. That, and, and if you believe in the Bible, then I'm going to say she's supposed to be that helper or that help me. Um, and not she's not holding the man up because that's going to get too stressful. Not only does she have to hold up the man, now she also has to hold up the house and the children. So I think it would, it would, it would behoove me to say no. Like, that's not how it's supposed to be. And if any woman says something to the nature of, uh, oh, let's say um, something to the nature of uh, a woman is, is just 
she's supposed to be emo she's overly emotional she's emotional like you, you have to really look at why all these things are being are there like if she's the emotional stronghold for the house what happens on those certain times of the month what happens whenever she's not feeling too good like you have to it's a, it's a community thing it's a man and a woman and being fitly together not just oh the the woman or the man is most important i think like in conversations like this like it's all about finding it's like matchmaking rather than oh the man or the woman is more important or the this is what or we could talk about like the strengths of these two issues and how someone with a horrible background can get somebody who who um can have a, that they want or well, something to the nature of what they want so are we talking about marriage because if you if you're if you're talking about the dynamics in a marriage um I, I don't know who's married on on the panel, but I've been married twenty one years. So um, twenty one years. Twenty one years has no Friday. When I was looking for someone who was marriageable, and and I and I and I dated prior to my husband, I I had you know my share of dates or whatever. And, but when I look for someone who I said I want to create a, a, a life with, I look for three things, a provider, a protector, and a promise keeper. And when I, when I say for, those were the three foundations or the three pillars that I look for in a husband. Um, not that I wasn't able to contribute financially, but I needed to know that he could take care of me because you mentioned the Bible, right? You mentioned that, and in that, there are um, there we, we have distinct roles in the Bible, and, I, and I'm a believer of the Bible. We have distinct roles. You Absolutely. have your provider, your protector, you have your nur nurturer, and I find that when we operate and function in our in our roles, then we are jointly fit. It's like driving in your own lane, right? And it and it can work. But, you know, I think we're talking from a traditional perspective. I think that this, this new generation has many uh, different approaches to relationships, marriage. I was, not, I was looking at a, a segment of the Red Table Talk with Jada Pinkett and her daughter, and they were talking about polyamorous relationships. And that, that term was kind of um, introduced to me with, you know, you have this love is love and you know, I, I, I'm with this one and then I'm with that one and it can I mean, work. but with, with all of that, is it is it shocking that there is a lot less married people nowadays? I, I do believe, and I will say it again, there's a di direct correlation with men not willing to commit. And I know there's a lot of men on here that saying, oh, well, the, the woman has to be this way. No, no. I know there's women that are wholesome. I know there's women that are holding it down and they are not and they're being dated and not and men are, are not committing. They don't have to commit because there's a lot of women out here that are giving that are um, providing for certain needs where they don't feel like they have to go the next mile and commit. And I don't care what you guys are saying. That is a reality that there are women out here that are marriageable. They're not on the pole. They're not um, only fans or, or any of that. And they're holding it down. They're raising sons. They're raising children. They have careers. They have well, degrees. Have they have to, their own homes. Hold on, hold on. Let her finish. They have their own homes. They have 401k and stocks. And they cannot find a man and no man can't tell me they can't find a good woman it's just that they have too many options and so therefore there's no need to pick mm -mm. all right so if i may I you, said, no, you no, said no. a whole lot that that i, I really want to respond to about it and i didn't get a man because you because <laughs> because I, I said, you, you came out with cognitive dissonance you said, I don't care what any of you men say, but there's a question about men and what men like. And you're like, no, that's not true. And you, you talk about how men don't want to commit because they have so many options. Mm -hmm. Yes, compared to certain women. I would say like the women that you explained. You said they have degrees. They have children. They have a son or a daughter. They have this. That's not important. We don't care about none of that. But we do care about it. 
as far as responsibilities for ourselves. Like one thing that a lot of adults or men and women don't understand is that everything that you add on to yourself is another responsibility. If I get a wife, I have a res I have that as a responsibility, and I do have a wife. She was actually on this call on this show before, but well, is, was it wasn't Miss Help Me. Miss Help Me. Yeah. 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 Good, yeah. All right. So like, I, mean, I, I add on this wife. That's a responsibility. One. I have a child. Another responsibility. I get a dog. Another responsibility. Another. I get a, a car. House. I get yeah, a house. All of these different responsibilities, guys. Whenever he get with this woman who already has all five of these, he goes from one to six, and in one day he's like, "No, I don't want that." And why should he be? Why should he be forced? Or why should? Why would women want to say, "Oh, this woman is good. She she does this. She does that." But it's not what men want. I we get talk that all about the time. Modern. No, no, no. I'm going to yeah, say that. Let, let Kristen answer. I'm going to say that there. I've seen plenty like women who who like don't have like a kid and stuff like that, but who they are with a man. They're with a man for five, six, seven years. Exactly. The, the man gets too comfortable because she's already providing for him. And he gets too comfortable and doesn't want to commit because he doesn't have to anymore because she can provide for herself. He's doing everything that he wants to do. And he doesn't have to commit because he's getting everything he wants. But also as a woman, you know, we have to show, oh, that we're marriageable. But once we do, there's no need to marry us because they've already seen it and that's what they're getting. Exactly. Huh. That's so, right. That's so, is that, is that, on, is that on the man or is that on the woman for giving too much of herself too she, early? She does have a point. She does have a point. She does but have a point. Again, but, she's made two strong points. The last, the first thing she ever said was that men and women, and you, me, you and I talked about this, Clement, on the phone just yeah. the other day. Men were made for women. Women were made for men. Without a woman, we are off balance. We're too much of one thing. Without a man, a woman is too lit, too much of one thing. And that we don't even make decisions the same. A woman makes emotional decisions. Man makes logical decisions. You put them two together, you got a good decision. But if you just go against you speaking on emotion, that's probably going to be a bad decision, depending on what it is. If you get one who thinks it's logical, he can be tricked. She can't be tricked. She's going to follow her instincts. She's going to listen to something you say. She's going to remind you of some things. The Zodiac time. That that that, so, yes, yeah, she's exactly right about that. She's going to hold us down. Then what she just said goes back to his, you don't treat a boyfriend like a husband. You don't treat a girlfriend like a wife. If you don't know you're going to marry this woman, I treat my girl with well, my fiance. I agree with you on that. Going to marry. Facts. Like, I know we're going to marry. So that's there's no doubt about that. But I see too many couples. They live together. They do all these things together. Yes. And then the sad thing is. You spent all this seven years invested with this dude. If he go out and get killed in a car accident, you get nothing. Kids that he got with another woman will get your social yeah. security. You That's get you don't have no rights. You can't even talk about life support. You live with him. You have the most emotion, the closest emotional connection with this man, other than his mother. And the first person they're gonna go to is if he's unmarried, his mother. Absolutely. Next, his oldest child. You will never get asked anything because then they're going to go to siblings. They're going to go through all blood relatives because you are nobody. You're either exactly. married or you're a girlfriend. And that's but what even happened with in between. that even happened with DMX uh, situation. From what I hear, uh, certain people in his family couldn't get certain things from his estate simply because they weren't. He wasn't married to certain people. But to get to what she was saying, like she like if you pay attention to what she was saying, she's like, there's plenty of good women who and they, she went on a list talking about what the woman provided and how the man got comfortable. And I'm like, OK, th doesn't that sound like the, the improper role anyway? Like we women love. The wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because this is the perfect time to segue into the next question. Okay. Because right. the next question. 